Hey guys, Jared here, and today we're going to be taking a look at loops. So I think the most famous of the loops is the for statement, so we're going to be taking a look at that, but there's also two other things that I want to explore, the while and repeat. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into it so I can explain things. So here I am in Playground, but whatever I apply in Playground can be applied to your application. So take what I learned here and apply it to your application. So essentially, loops are exactly how they sound. They loop around and they keep doing things over and over again until something stops it. Now there are such things as loops going on forever, so you don't want to get into that circumstance because then that creates a lot of memory problems, so you don't want to work with that. What we're going to do today is just work with for, while, and repeat. So this is how they work. So the way we get started, we just go ahead and type in for. Now after this, you just go ahead and create a variable name. So this can be whatever you want. The most famous to use for for values is i. But again, you can change that to whatever you want. Then after this, you say in, and then what you need is a starting number. So the starting number here is i's variable to start with. So you have zero and then you say dot 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 and then you just go ahead and put the last number that you want to cycle through. Then you're just going to say open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And then let's just go ahead and see what that produces in terms of i. So I'm going to go ahead and print the value of i and let's see what it puts out. So as you can see right here, we have zero, one, two, three, four, five. You can see that it ran six times because zero, one, two, three, four, five, that's six times. So one thing you wanna keep in mind is if you're trying to run a variable five times and you have it as five, it's actually gonna run it six times unless you do this. So you can also change up this dot, dot, dot value. So you can make this dot, dot, and then less than five, and that's gonna make it only run five times. Now you might be thinking, if I'm able to do less than five, what happens if I do greater than five? Well, you get an error, nothing really happens. So don't even mess with that. You just say zero dot dot less than five, and that makes it only run five times. Or another thing you can do is make the starting value of i equal to one and then that's just gonna make it start at one and end at five. And yeah, that's pretty much the for statement right there. So you say for the variable name in, and then you start at zero and end at whatever number you want. Now, another thing you can do with all these functions that I'm gonna be showing, let's go ahead and say I have an array of names. So there you have it, those are my array of names. And now one thing that's pretty cool with all this stuff is let's go ahead and say for, and then this will be a name in my array of names then I'm just gonna go ahead and print that name value. So as you can see, it's just gonna cycle through my array of names, pick out a name, and then I'm gonna print it. So as you can see, it ran three times. We have three values in here, and it printed all three of those out down there. So that's just another way that you can use for statements. Now let's go ahead and get into while statements. And then for a while statement, it's pretty much the same deal, but what you wanna do is actually create a variable to start with. So you're still gonna say var, i will be equal to let's say zero and then you can say while i is less than uh, six then we're going to run this stuff in here so while i is less than six we're going to run this stuff in here and if you were just go ahead and say print the value of i this is where you get into the problem of this variable is never going to stop as you can see so you have a forever loop oh no so you want to avoid that as much as possible because it might crash Xcode if you do have those forever loops. So the way you fix this is you need some way to make i go up. So if you were calling a function or something, you would want to make sure that that function says i plus equals one. So it's going to add one to i every time we're doing this. So now we can go ahead and print out i, and then now it's only going to run six times, as you can see. So with the i variable, we start at zero, then we run this function in here, and while i is less than six, we go ahead and add one, then we print that variable out. That's why we start with one down here. Now if you wanted to have it run seven times, you could go ahead and put that print i right after that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for while. So we go ahead and create our variable up here, i is equal to zero, then we say while i is less than six, we're gonna go ahead and do this stuff down here. And then, uh, again, you want to avoid forever loops because then it can crash your system pretty fast. Now, going back to this array of names right here, let's go ahead and delete that. Now, what we're going to do to test between, rather than just numbers, we're going to go ahead and test between names. So what we're going to do with this is I'm going to go ahead and say var uh, my name one will be equal to, then I'm going to take a name two, and I'm going to make that equal to, let's say, then down here inside of our while statement, we can go ahead and say while name one 
is not equal to name two, then we're gonna run this stuff in here. Now, as you can see, i plus equals one is totally going crazy. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna say if i is equal equal to let's say six, then I'm gonna go ahead and change uh, my name to equal to John. So here we have it. Now you can see it runs six times and then it's going through. And then once we do that, the name two is going to be equal to John. Let's go ahead and say print my name one. And then I'm also going to be printing my name two so that we can see everything. So it starts off with name one and name two being John and hi. It runs six times, then it changes that second name equal to John. So either way, that's how you would work with a while statement with something like names. You would go ahead and compare those strings. Again, it works with pretty much anything that you can compare. Now, you wanna be careful about getting into those forever loops, as I said. So yeah, just be careful with that. So you wanna make sure that you have some way that that I statement just doesn't keep growing forever and ever because four values and all the stuff loop really quickly. So it'll automatically fill up your device and crash it. Now, the last thing I have to show you guys in terms of loops is the repeat function. So this is actually an addition to while. So what we're gonna do here is copy that and then we'll paste this in just a minute, but you're just gonna go ahead and say repeat, and you're gonna repeat all this stuff in here. And then right after this repeat function, you're just gonna go right after this cur closed curly bracket right here, and you're gonna say while name one is not equal to name two. And it pretty much runs the exact same way as we had before, so there's not much explaining to do in terms of repeat. I think it's just a nicer way to organize things. And yeah, there you have it. That is how you use for statements, while statements, and also the repeat function with the while statement. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you wanna see more videos like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. This week I started posting week daily videos and I can definitely tell that you guys are enjoying them. So thank you all so much for the support. Have a wonderful weekend everyone and I will be back next week with more tutorials. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.